Hey, hey, good evening. Hi, this is Jan from New York City, and my channel name is Jan from New York City. Saves money. How's everybody doing tonight? Even though I'm saying tonight, I'm actually recording this way, way early in a morning, and actually about eight or nine days before you're hearing this. Let me tell you something. Right now, the weather outside is actually absolutely raining. And it's raining hard, and you could tell it's like a very, very dank, chilly morning, even though it's technically spring on the calendar. But you know something? It reminded me of December. And when I think of December, automatically I'm thinking of the height of the holiday season. You might even be able to hear these raindrops hitting the back of my air conditioner. But anyway, I think of Christmas. Here it is May, and I'm thinking of Christmas. I believe that the spirit of Christmas, which is a positive, good thing, should be something that we should utilize all year long. I'm going to talk to you a minute about what I call an elf on a shelf. Now, of course, I did not create that term. That term was used for a different reason. But in this case, in a title, I'm mentioning elf on a shelf for a different reason. Have you been an elf on a shelf for somebody? What does that mean? That means doing some form of charitable act. Not necessarily does it have to be a monetary donation act, but a, an act of kindness quietly with a little bit of a shush sign on your lips. You know, like when you put your finger against your lips and you go, shh, so no one knows. And that that is a wonderful thing to do. I'm just like sort of like reminiscing about a teacher that I knew. And this teacher was kind of sort of thrown into the business without waking up one day and saying, hey, I plan on being a teacher. Do you hear that ring? I want to see if you can. Hang on. Wow, it's even lightning. Wow, definitely that kind of a day. Amazing. But, you know, like you get your sensories up like, wow, it feels almost like December again, even though it's technically May when I'm recording this. So I knew I knew of a teacher. And I knew her very, very well. And she makes it, whoa, wow, wow, talk about lightning and thunder. Holy smoke, you heard that one live. Oh, my word. So let's get back to this amazing teacher, in my opinion. This person liked to do a lot of things quietly, without fanfare, without applause. And she knew of a student and a family, they had like started the school year in mid-year. They came from somewhere else, uh, not from New York, somewhere else. And uh, the child that was the student in that teacher's class was oftentimes made fun of because that, that student wasn't able to afford the regulation uh, school shoes that are supposed to, you know, be part of the uniform of which that school, you know, required, ooh, more lightning. This is really tough. Wow. Going to probably hear some thunder in a second. Anyway, wow, I love doing this stuff a lot. Hold on. Whoa. Oh, my word. So I didn't mean to distract you with that. But, wow, there's a lot to be said about that. So this young man was made fun of a lot because of a simple matter for most people, like wearing the regulatory sh school shoes that that school required. So the teacher, what that teacher did was ask permission from the child's family if they could take them to the store and purchase a brand new pair of shoes. There was a specific store all the kids and their families had to go to in, the, in New York City to get these exact shoes that were necessary. It wasn't like, well, the shoes came to you. It was a different world back in the 80s, in the early 90s. Different world, not like right now. So anyway, that teacher took an afternoon off just to take that student. So, you know, got permission from the parents to take that student, buy that student a pair of school shoes. And I believe that that teacher also picked up lightning again. This is crazy. I believe that that teacher also picked up a couple of regulation school shirts. I can't make this stuff up. Wow. Who predicted this weather right now? Making a long story short, no one knew. So the child attended school with that, you know, brand new shoes, 
new shirts, and the picking on was over. The picking on ceased. There was one condition that the teacher had, and the teacher said, you cannot tell anyone about this. It meant a lot for that teacher to keep her act of kindness anonymous. There's something to be said about that. Sometimes we should do things and just do things without making a big to-do about it and just do it because it's a charitable act of kindness. And that's it. And there's nothing more, nothing less to that. Now, I knew of another teacher because those classrooms were, that school was very, in fact, that was one of the very first parochial schools that was established in New York City. And the building itself was ancient, ancient building. Making a long story short, when, you know, we used to get hit hard with very, very, very hot springs. It was almost summer-like, so the kids were always dying of thirst, classrooms are hot. There was always an old-timey fan. And those classrooms were as large as about anywhere from 38 to 40-something students. I should know because I taught in that school. So I'm verifying that this is true. So there was another elf on a shelf teacher that she had uh, received some sort of a windfall. And she always wanted air conditioning in the classroom. Always wanted air conditioning in the classrooms. And she was a very unselfish person. Do you know what she did? She bought 16 window air conditioners because Every single grade level, like first through eighth grade, kindergarten and pre-K were in a separate building. Okay. But in the main building where she was, 16 window air conditioners, because there was like, it would be divided. Grade one would be one, one and one, two, two, one and two, two. Every grade had an opposite grade, the same level, but was called two, like one, 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 two. So out of pocket, you know, not for anything, but uh, no one's complaining. This is just stating a fact, a fact of that time in the world. I don't know what it is right now, but I would imagine it's probably still the same story. (laughs) Parochial school teachers do not make much money at all. Just saying, just saying. And a lot of people in the other schools that are not parochial schools, regular city schools, they're always mentioning you know, what they're complaining about, and their complaints are legitimate as well. Teachers, as a rule, don't make a lot of money. I mean, I I do have an issue with that because teachers are a very integral part of a student, of a young person's life. Okay. But that's my opinion. That's just my opinion, whatever. So this teacher, out of pocket, paid for 16 window air conditioners. I mean... Talk about an elf on a shelf. And as it turned out, she was not very, very physically, physically well. Her health was declining and she lost her life at a very tender, young age. Now, the school doesn't exist anymore because for whatever the reason, I don't know the reason, I guess they just weren't getting enough admissions. And then, you know, eventually the school closed down by the diocese. But making a long story short, She was an elf on a shelf. Didn't want anyone to know. Didn't want anyone to find out. I just happened to be close friends with that person. So that's how I knew about that. That's how I knew about that. And, you know, may God bless, you know, her memories forever, even though the school doesn't exist anymore. But just think of those few summers, you know, late spring. You know, it's terrible to teach when it's like 100 degrees. And you have an old timey fan blowing on 40 kids. We have, what I used to do with the kids, I used to let them out maybe about two o'clock on an afternoon that was so hot and go grab a drink of water. You know, that was like a big trip to the water fountain in the hallway. I'm not even kidding you, but it was a necessary trip. It was a different world back then. Let's get back to elfing on a shelfing. I found out recently that a couple of people might have been elves on a shelf for me. I'm not getting further than that. I, I don't have fact to it because, again, it's an elfing on a shelfing situation. I'm forming little conclusions about that. Have you been an elf on a shelf for anyone in your life? 
and you kept it. As my mother used to say it, quieta, quieta, quiet, <laughs> quietly, keeping it quietly. I think there's something to be said about doing kind gestures without making a big announcement about it. Have you ever known anyone that did a little something and they would broadcast it all over the place? To me, I don't know, just take something away from it. Is it me? or I mean, how do you feel about that? What about those kindly little gestures? Sometimes it doesn't have to be a monumental thing. Like 16 air conditioners, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Uh, uh, that teacher that, that took the young man uh, for the shoes, let me tell you something. I know for a fact, fact, that person was struggling themselves. They were trying to figure out how to make ends meet themselves. And they had their own child to take care of. Just saying, just saying, elfin on a shelfin. If you want to do something, you do it from your heart. You do not broadcast it. And in me, to me, there's something to be said about quiet acts of kindness. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. I just thought I'd share that story. In the meantime, this has been Jan from New York City. I'm going to close out the show, and I'll be back with an invisible wave. Be right back. Have an amazing, fantastic night. Take good care. Good night.